Hello everyone, I welcome you all. This is Neelas Nayan Barthakur. And today I am here to discuss about the topic, the basic difference between a microprocessor, a microcontroller and a system on chip. When these three terms are taken, we can accumulate under one word that is a processor. Yes, when we take the term processor, actually we are wagging between these three terms. So visually, if we see any microprocessor or a microcontroller or a SOC, there is hardly any, any difference between the three. Although SOCs are quite smaller than these two, but definitely have a similar appearance. For the time being, let's keep the SOC aside and discuss these two first. See, microprocessors and microcontrollers are almost identical, but they are different in many aspects. They are different in terms of the application in which they are used, they are different in terms of the cost, they are different in terms of the processing power which they possess, and they are different in terms of the power consumption. So first, let us see the difference between them in terms of the application in which they are used. The classic example of a microprocessor application will be personal computer or a laptop. So using this laptop, we can do a lot of stuff. Like we can use it for gaming, for web browsing, for photo editing, for creating documents, or we can use it for mathematical calculations, simulations, or any other media streaming. So the microprocessor is basically used in an application where the tax is not predefined. It is depend upon the user or it is used in an application where intensive processing is required. So summing up, the technical definition of a microprocessor would be this one. Yeah, here you can see it on the screen. Moving on, while in case of a microcontroller, they are used for a specific tax. So based on the inputs which are given to the microcontroller, it does some processing and it gives us the result as an output. So here, the input could be an user input or the inputs which are coming from the sensors. So the example of microcontroller application is the digital camera washing machine or you can take the microwave oven. So if we see all these devices, the tax which is going to be performed is predefined. Like in the case of microwave oven, once we set the power and the timing, it gives us the cook food. Likewise. In the case of the washing machine, once we set the parameters of the machine, it gives us the clean and dry clothes. So basically a microcontroller is used in an application where the tax is predefined. Yeah, again summing up, the technical definition of a microcontroller would be, yeah, here. You can see it on the screen, you can note it down if you need it. Moving on. Now let us see the difference between in the microprocessor and microcontroller in terms of internal structures. So like I said earlier, the microprocessors are used in application where the tax is not predefined. So they are, so they can be used for a very light application like creating documents or very intensive applications like gaming or media streaming. <clears throat> so the amount of memory that is required depend upon the application. So if you see a microprocessor chip, it, is, uh, it only contains the CPU, which is the central processing unit, and all the memory elements and the I.O. interfaces are connected to it externally. So in case of a microprocessor, memory elements like RAM, ROM, the input-output ports, serial interfaces, and timers, all are connected externally. While in case of a microcontroller, as they are used for a specific tax, the amount of memory and I.O. ports which are required are limited. So in case of a microcontroller, all the memory elements and I.O. ports are integrated along with the CPU inside a single chip. So the size of an overall system is much smaller. While in case of a micro microprocessor, as all the memory elements and I.O. ports are connected externally, so overall size of the system is larger than the microcontroller. Now, let us see the difference between a microcontroller and a microprocessor in terms of the processing power and memory. So microprocessors are operate at much higher speed. So if you see the clock speed of microprocessors, 
it is in the range of gigahertz. The clock speed may varies from one gigahertz up to four gigahertz for the high-end processor processors. Yeah, now for Intel latest generation processors, they even clock up to five gigahertz. Those are insanely fast processing processors. So as a microprocessor has to run an operating system, the amount of RAM that is required that is uh, is quite high. Yeah, yeah, and in case of ROM also. So if you see the RAM, which is a volatile memory in the microprocessor, it ranges from 5 to 12 MB and it goes up to 32 GB. Similarly, if you see the ROM in a microprocessor, it ranges from 128 GB and it goes up to 2 TB, which is uh, 2 terabyte. And the common peripheral interfaces, which you see in uh, microprocessors are like USB, high speed in Ethernet and the UART, etc. Well, in case of a microcontroller, the clock speed is in the range of megahertz. So if you see the clock speed of microcontrollers, it ranges from one megahertz and it goes up to 300 megahertz in the high end microcontrollers. As and as these uh, microcontrollers are defined for a specific tax, the amount of memory that is required by them is quite less. So if you see a RAM inside the microcontroller, it is in the range of kilobytes. So it can go from 2 KB up to 256 KB. Similarly, if you see a flash memory or any program memory inside a microcontroller, it varies from 32 KB and it can goes up to 2 MB. And the common peripheral interfaces, which uh, you will find inside a microcontroller are I2C and etc. So basically all these serial interfaces, which you find in a modern day microcontrollers. So basically these are the uh, serial interfaces. If you see a modern day microprocessor, they're either of 32 bit or 64 bit. So 32 bit microprocessor means a microprocessor that can handle 32 bits of binary data at the same time. Similarly, a 64 bit microprocessor will able to handle 64 bits of data at the same time. So in case of a 64 bit microprocessor, all the address bus and the data buses are of 62 for 64 bits. Similarly, in the case of 32 bit microprocessor, the address and data buses are of 32 bits. While if you see a modern day microcontroller, they're either of 8 bits, 16 bits or 32 bits. So the amount of data which can be handled by a microprocessor in a single cycle is higher than the microcontrollers. Now moving on, let's see the difference between the microcontroller and microprocessor in terms of the power consumption and the cost. In case of a microprocessor, as all the memory elements and IO ports are connected externally, the overall cost of the system as well as power consumption is higher compared to microcontrollers. Now, the last part, what is system on chip, which is also known as SOC. You might have observed that when I was discussing the application of microprocessor, I had given the example of a personal computer and the laptop, but I didn't mention anything about the smartphone. But if you see the smartphone, it can do almost all the things which personal computer can do. Like you can play games, you can do web browsing, you can create documents, etc. And almost everything on a smartphone. But still it is not an example of microprocessor application. Why? Because the chip that you find inside the smartphone is neither a microprocessor nor a microcontroller. It is sort of combination of both the things. I mean somewhat com uh, combination of both the things. And it is known as the system on chip. This is the reason why it is called the SOC. Now, the question what arises is how it is possible to integrate all the parts inside the single chip. See, there are many reasons behind it. Let's find out the reasons. The first reason is the mic is the processor, which you see inside the smartphone are not as powerful as the processor, which you will find inside the desktop and a laptop. Yeah, this is the main reason. The second reason, SOCs in smartphones are built using the ARM architecture. The system on chip which is designed using this ARM architecture are quite powerful as well as power efficient. And the processors of uh, desktop and laptop are built using the CISC architecture. So, although on paper, the smartphone processors don't look powerful compared to the desktop processors. But because of this software optimization, you can hardly feel any lag when you are operating on these smartphones or tablets. Apart from that, the advancement 
in the manufacturing technology has allowed us to infrigate more and more transistor inside the same area. I hope you have heard about the Moore's law. So not only in the smartphone, but in desktop and laptop also, you will see that many parts are integrated inside the same chip. So these are some of the reasons why you are able to integrate all the components inside a single chip. Now, as we know about what is a, what is a system on chip, let's find out what is inside the system on chip. So the first thing that you will find inside the SOC is obviously the processor, which we have talked about a lot. So the next big thing that you will see inside an, inside the SOC is the GPU, which is also known as the graphical processing unit. And it is responsible for all the graphic related activity inside your smartphone or the tablet. The next thing which you see inside the system on chip is the DSP, which is also known as the digital signal processor. And it is responsible for the activities related to audio processing, video processing, and somewhat related to display. So in uh, some SOC, you will find this audio and video processing module as a different module, while in some cases, they're integrated inside the same module. The next thing that you will see inside this uh, SOC is the memory element, which contains the storage memory, that is the ROM and the, uh, ROM and the RAM. So the next module that you see inside the system on chip is the connectivity module. And this module ensures that the user has all kinds of activity like Wi-Fi, USB, radio, Bluetooth, and sometimes uh, even GPS and cellular radios. So these are the basic module that you will uh, see inside a system on chip. Apart from this, some higher end uh, SOC also contain, uh, contains some other modules like a uh, module for the camera, location, uh, security, and the sensors. Now, sometimes due to the size country, uh, constraints, it is uh, not possible to integrate the RAM and ROM inside this SOC. So in such scenarios, the memory package is stacked above this system on chip package and they're connected using this ball grid array. So this kind of packaging arrangement is known as a package on package arrangement. And this type of package on package arrangement reduces the cost as well as the size. Now in the scenarios, where memory is outside the system on chip, you need to establish the connection uh, between the CPU and the memory. And this is done by the module known as the North Bridge. So this module ensures that the connectivity between the RAM and the CPU. And these are the modules you will find inside the today's system on chip. So summing up, if you need the technical definition of a SOC, so here it goes, you can see it on the screen. See, so far the system on chip technology is more or less limited to the smartphones and the tablets. But in the near future, you will see the system on chip in almost all the devices and in all applications. So the question now arises is what about the desktop and laptop, laptop processors then? See, the answer is they will still be used in the applications where size and power consumption is not an issue. And you require an intensive amount of processing like uh, gaming and uh, video editing. See, so with this, I would like to end up today's presentation and have a bright life ahead. Thank you. This is Neelov signing off.